13th of February of 1969, a tremendous blast occurred at the building across from here, the Montreal Stock Exchange. When we entered the place, there were people crying and running all over, and tons of rubble with a white dust that it looked like there was no storm. It was a, a, a horrible scene. This year we have had uh, simultaneous explosions, uh, three explosions at the same moment in, in August, and also for the first time we've had bombs in public places such as the metro stations, which was never seen before. My job was to dismantle a bomb, make a report, that was it. You see, I had accepted a uh, rather unusual job. I had to uh, do it right to the end. I became a policeman in May of 1959. My first assignment was Point St. Charles, my native district. I spent four very good, nice years in Point St. Charles, and I was ready to spend much more time there. Uh, the fall of 62, there was a, a new phenomenon in Montreal, violent demonstrations. This was unheard of in Montreal. We used to go, to go on the street uh, twice a year, Saint Jean Baptiste and Santa Claus Parade. All of a sudden, you have a group of students who are demonstrating against the president of, of CN, who uh, said that when he was asked why there was no French Canadian on his board of administrators, he says, "When I find a competent one, I will na I will name one on my board," and that made the news. You see. When bombs started to be found in series, the city and the police department decided to, to, to create a real bomb squad. All of a sudden, I was on loan to what we called at the time the, the mobile laboratory. My first day with the bomb squad was May the 17th of 1963, the Black Friday, when 10 bombs were deposited in as many mailboxes in the night in Westmount. Typical FLQ bomb looked like this. You got two five pounds each of dynamite, 10 pounds, a clock. The clock, the minute, the clock, we, we, the, the bell will ring, the key will unwind. As it unwinds, it will touch the, the contact. That's it. One fatal bombing took place not far from here, 5th of May of 1966, and the shoe factory that was hiring scabs. Their objective was much different from hitting uh, government symbols. They went to big business, capitalism. Five minutes before one o'clock in the afternoon, during lunch hour, uh, Two young kids drove a motorcycle. The one in the back seat had shoebox. Made sense. It was a shoe factory. And told the lady, "Someone will call you about that." So Madame Marin took the, took the, the package, and she was blown to bits.
I was then driven for approximately 20 minutes and taken out of the car in the garage, led upstairs into a room where I spent the next 60 days. It was very, very likely that Mr. Cross was in a certain house. So I was asked to go there. Police were watching it until the early hours of the morning when the kidnappers, conscious that police uh, were on to them, uh, transmitted a message via a pipe which was thrown out a second floor window. Yeah, the piece of pipe had been, had been thrown. The call was relayed to me, but I had a non-marked station wagon. So I had a bulletproof vest, and I pick up the piece of pipe, and there's a paper in it. So with a pair of tweezers, I pulled the paper. That's it. It says, if you attempt anything, gas, guns, etc., Mr. Cross will be the first to die. We have lots of dynamite. to the duplex on October the 5th. The British diplomat, the lawyer, and the kidnappers leave under heavy escort for the Expo rendezvous. But we also informed that there would be two bombs in the car, consistent each of five pounds of dynamite with a spring-loaded switch. That's called a dead man's switch. If he gets shot, if he die, <coughs> boom. and there we were out in the sunlight, which I now saw for the first time in 60 days. We then had the most terrifying ride through the streets of Montreal, surrounded by police, streets lined with troops, police. This is the cavalcade traveling between 40 and 50 miles an hour, arriving from Dockside, Montreal's side, at the Man and His World entrance. As you can see, they're going at a good clip Originally, there had to be just two policemen on the scene. The, the commander of the, 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 the police station and his driver. Luckily, the driver was a former member of the bomb squad. So when the terrorists arrived on the scene, he indicated that the two bombs were incomplete. There was no detonator. Later tonight, Quebec Premier Robert Barrasso went uh, in to visit Mr. Cross and also had a conversation with him. Premier Bourassa paid a visit to Mr. Cross. So as he left the pavilion, the pavilion, instead of going to his limousine, he went to us. He says, uh, Today, gentlemen, you have, your work was more important than what we politicians have done. And I thank you for it. So our October crisis ended with the congratulations and thanks from the, the Premier. Not too bad. Though. My, job was, my job was to dismantle a bomb, make a report, precisely in view of testifying one day in court. That was it. You see, I had accepted a rather unusual job. I contributed to uh, public security. Our, our, our challenge was to keep danger to the minimum, you see, by arresting people so that they won't put more bombs. I was a policeman. I was a policeman. That's it. 